Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HGTV Test here. I am a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. I was in Korea recently having a look at some 2020 televisions and I am having a stopover in Amsterdam on the way back to Manchester. Now, I think the Dutch are extremely lucky. Not only is prostitution and cannabis legal here, they also get access to Disney Plus, so I decided to fire up the Disney Plus app on my iPhone 11 Pro Max to try and have a look at the Mandalorian. But I found the picture to be extremely dim, so I WhatsApped my colleague Adam Fairclough, who is also known as Evil Boris Online. He normally does our HDR game analysis, and like a private investigator, who is plying his trade in the same town as Hercule Poirot, Adam is on the case in a flash. So he ran his analysis using the same intensity scale that was used in our analysis of the Star Wars original trilogy. So if you can pay attention to the scale displayed at the bottom of the screen, green will correspond to 200 nits, yellow to 300 nits, red to 400 nits, pink will be 700 nits. And after looking through the entire first episode and some of the second episode, I think our conclusion is that none of the specular highlight actually exceeded 200 nits in either Dolby Vision or HDR10 through the Disney Plus app for the Mandalorian. Now, if you look at, let's say, the explosions, if you look at the laser beams, if you look at the sun, if you look at how the reflections actually bounce off the Mandalorian helmet and armor, none of this specular highlight detail actually exceeded 200 nits, which is insane because I will go into why this is an extremely bad practice later. But if you think that the original trilogy is bad, that the maximum brightness is only capped at 400 nits, the Mandalorian is even worse. It is only capped at 200 nits. And some people criticized our analysis of the Star Wars original trilogy, saying that it is an extremely old film. The dynamic range that was captured wasn't that high anyway, so we shouldn't expect a really high peak brightness out of it. But I disagree. I think, you know, if you look at the Mandalorian, obviously, which is film and mastered recently, it only has a brightness of 200 nits. It shows that it is actually the efforts and the resources that is put in by the studio that decides how good or how bad an HDR transfer is. If I think of some older films that has been pressed on 4K Blu-rays that presented extremely impressive HDR impact, there are many old films that bounce to mind. For example, Blade Runner, the original one, 1982, the Shining by Stanley Kubrick that had a fantastic 4K HDR mastering and also Alien, the 4K HDR version. These are examples of older movies that had received a proper HDR treatment to give the shadows a good delineation and also the peak specular highlight a boost to be properly displayed and enjoyed on modern 4K HDR televisions and unfortunately the 
Star Wars original trilogy and especially the Mandalorian don't fall into this category. Now, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I have your attention, please? Passenger Fung O traveling to Seoul. Would you please make yourself known to the service counter? Luckily, it's not me. But as I was saying, the Star Wars original trilogy and also the Mandalorian don't fall into this category of movies that have received proper HDR treatment. And I think this is extremely bad practice when you try and put an SDR film into an HDR container. Because when, let's say, any 4K HDR television receive an HDR flag, they will kick into either HDR or Dolby Vision mode depending on whether the display is Dolby Vision capable. And when they kick into HDR mode, the backlight or the OLED light will be driven to the maximum to hit the maximum peak brightness that the display is capable of. But if you actually master the movie to only a peak wide of 200 nits, that means that you are actually wasting a lot of power consumption. Let's say an LED LCD will be running its backlight at maximum, let's say 100 or 20, then they will be running at maximum but the image will still look dim and it may be even dimmer than the SDR version which is why some of you out there may prefer to watch the Mandalorian in SDR and also when most 4K HDR televisions kick into HDR 10 or Dolby Vision mode the gamma is usually locked out on certain televisions which means that there is no more headroom for us to lift the brightness for us to lift the average picture level or APL to provide a better viewing experience in high ambient light condition during daytime and these are the reasons I think it is extremely bad practice not only on Disney's front but also any other studios who decide to just put an SDR film into an HDR container it doesn't make sense because you know you're basically asking the TV to run at its highest power consumption you're asking the TV to boost the peak brightness but you're not giving the content, the actual boost to fulfill its potential. I think it is totally wrong and I think it will give people a really bad HDR experience and they may be disillusioned about HDR because proper HDR is truly transformative, it is truly enjoyable and yet we get the sort of content mastered to a peak brightness of 200 nits and I think Disney should regret this and deliver a proper HDR experience to their subscribers. If they do not wish to regret in HDR, send it out as SDR. Don't actually put an HDR or Dolby Vision flag in the content which will force these televisions to go into Dolby Vision mode or HDR 10 mode which will then consume more energy which will then also lock out the gamma control giving less headroom for the content to be viewed in a brighter environment. So I think uh, that wraps up my rant for today and I believe I have a flight to catch still back to Manchester. But while I'm here, thanks for watching and cheers. <laughs> <laughs>